What is up, you guys? This is Brandon coming to you from the Department of Comics. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm excited to get started doing YouTube for you guys, sharing content and sharing my love for comics. I am going to be doing a lot of speculation videos. So we're trying to see the future of what keys will appear in the movie industry, what books you should look out for, and even some modern comics, what books are going to be increased due to like a, a character reappearing in a seminal run or even like a, if they got like a deep dive. So let's get started with the one speculation that is on everybody's mind and that is WandaVision currently going on in the MCU. I'm filming this um, before episode uh, 9. So if anything happens, this is coming out before episode 9. So I'm just forewarning you guys with that. Obviously, we know that uh, West Coast Avengers number 45 has hit the shelves Huge on his first appearance of the White Vision that we all that we saw, and then a book that I was speculating from day one. We actually saw this in episode seven, but I just want to share it because I'm proud of myself for speculating it and getting it right. Getting that payoff was Fantastic Four number ninety four first appearance of Agatha, and with Agatha being like the big bad of this, um, this book has gotten all the hype, and I'm excited because that was the book that I was heavily speculated on, and I bought it for fifteen bucks right as WandaVision started, so that is definitely a huge payout for my PC, and I hope you guys can share something a little bit similar with WandaVision or any of the MCU movies or TV shows or films, you know, any of that good stuff. A book that we uh, didn't really see coming that I do want to talk about is Marvel's Pilot number four, which is a Werewolf by Night story, and that is the first appearance of the Darkhold. It was seen in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but we did see an Easter egg that was very clear in WandaVision, so that book is going to be heavily speculated because a lot of people were saying this is proof that it is Mephisto okay and to me that is proof that it's not Mephisto I have not been saying it has been that we're gonna see Mephisto I don't think we're gonna see Mephisto until we get both Blade and Ghost Rider in the MCU and I have a lot of reasons for that a lot of evidence that will back up and that is basically gonna be the big bulk of today's video okay now everything in the Marvel Universe comes full circle so, Marvel is not going in the hell route. So, Mephisto lives in, is, dwells in hell. Dwells in hell. That, that kind of rhymes. He dwells in hell. And that is not the direction that Marvel is going because they don't have the cast of characters yet. Okay, we are getting a lot of mystic in the Marvel Universe with Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange. Okay, that is being combined with the cosmic energy that we're coming out of Infinity War and Endgame. So, Marvel is only continuing that by bringing Kang and Korvac into the MCU. So... The books that I am going to suggest you guys start looking at are The Strange Tales 126 through 180. Okay, so we get 126, which is the first appearance of Dormammu and first Clea. We already saw Dormammu, but we are going to get Clea in the second Doctor Strange movie. Okay, and then 127, which is their second appearance, also first Eye of Agamotto. We've already seen nothing new, but that mythos is only going to be uh, do dived deeper into as we see more Doctor Strange, who's honestly one of my personal favorite Avengers. Then we got 126, 128, which is the first Demonicus. Okay, that is a student of Mordo, who is actually a huge part of Doctor Strange 2. Okay, um, so definitely look for that book above anything, because if we get Mordo, we're obviously going to see that character, maybe even as a future villain, a character that we're just going to see growth in that movie and then we got strange tales number 138 which is the first appearance of eternity twin of infinity who's also a dope character and the reason why i think eternity will be a great villain in the gardens of the galaxy films is because that could be a great kind of bridge between the eternals and the gardens and galaxy because we're already getting introduced to a lot of the celestial energy and with eternity being a celestial and part of that mythos, that is a great bridge to combine the two. And obviously the Guardians of the Galaxy are connected to the Avengers. So 138, a book that I'm speculating, heavy right now, okay? And then we're going to go into 146, that is still Strange Tales. That's where we get Clea's name reveal. So we do get Clea, she does become interesting and they do a good thing with her character. That is a book that you're going to want to have ahead of time, Okay. And then 150, which is first Umar, which is Dormammu's sister, we can also see very quickly in the MCU. Again, these are characters that share both the mythos of Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch, but also the cosmic energy that the Marvel Universe is bringing us to. All right, we got 169, Brother Voodoo. 
basically been confirmed at this point. A lot of rumors. And it would make sense for Marvel to bring in Brother Voodoo and kind of create more diversity in the Marvel Universe instead of just taking a character that was invented 10 years ago, a very modern character that doesn't have a lot of story. Brother Voodoo's had years of history and would be a great asset to the Marvel Universe and just a huge fit. Okay, now, if we are getting a lot of mythos, we're still going cosmic. We got the Fantastic Four. Obviously, with the Fantastic Four and with Guardians, with those Easter eggs we saw in Volume 2, we are getting Adam Warlock first appearing in Fantastic Four as him in a, a Fantastic Four 66 and 67. As Warlock, we got him in Marvel Premiere number 1. That being said, if you have Adam Warlock, you are going to get Strange Tales number 178, which is first Magus, who is his uh, evil version, okay? And then, just for kicks and giggles, if we are getting Adam Warlock, you cannot have Adam Warlock without Pip the Troll, which is Strange Tales number 179, just a fun book to have, kind of like having the first Howard the Duck. So that being said, that is why I don't think we are getting Mephisto at all. We're not getting Mephisto at all, not for many, many years to come, because then we'll need another Ghost Rider, and we're going to get Blade, which are two characters that are better suited for that side and would do Mephisto a much better justice. Also, you're not going to bring Mephisto into a TV show. He's a villain who holds too much stake to be name-dropped like that. And I know that um, Elizabeth Olsen has been saying we are going to get like a, a Luke Skywalker in the Mandalorian type ball drop. But I don't think that will be Mephisto. I think that might actually be a mutant. You know, we could start seeing uh, Professor J. We might get Jean Grey. Um, who knows? Maybe like it could, could be Jean Grey. It could be someone completely different pulling her out of it. It has to be someone powerful enough to reach her mind and powerful enough to provide her the comfort to get out of whatever situation she's in. So I could definitely see it being either Jean Grey, Professor X. I don't really think it's going to be someone that she's already attached to in the Avengers because there's just too much history, too much drama, too much negativity in that atmosphere with her, um, especially with everything going on with the Sokovia Accords. So we're going to see a new face that will be friendly and heartwarming for the fans and for Wanda as a character, okay? Now, that being said, we're not getting Mephisto. I don't think we're getting him anytime soon. Next movie up, which is a, which is a Amazing Spider-Man um, No Way Home, which can include many different things. It can be No Way Home, meaning um, there's been a lot of deals with or confliction with Sony and Disney. I don't think that's the case. It could be No Way Home because of the way we're going in the Marvel Universe, in Cosmic and in the Mythos, which can even prove my point even more. Or No Way Home because Spider-Man's on a journey where the stakes are very high. That being said, it could be a combination of all those things. Because his identity is already revealed, it could be a No Way Home, back to the life he already knew. So, he needs a lawyer to get out of the mess that Mysterio left him in. And there's a lot of speculation with Daredevil. So if you are speculating Daredevil, pick up the early Daredevil issues with Spider-Man 16 and 17. Definitely pick those up. And then look for your Amazing Spider-Man 15 and 47, which are early Craven appearances. You had his first there at 15. And then 47 is that iconic story that John Romita Sr. drew just so perfectly. I could see coming to life. The reason why I'm still specking on Craven is because we're seeing a lot of those early so we're seeing a lot of those silver age spider-man villains take the stage and disney is just spinning it into a way that uh brings spider-man into the mcu a little bit more but all of those first appearances kind of happen on the same time shocker norman osborne vulture we're gonna see a lot of them and, and uh, um the tinkerer i believe was an earlier villain as well don't quote me on that but we're getting a lot of those easter eggs of the sinister six coming together which was another rumored thing. So Craven would be a great asset. You know, he knows who Spider-Man is. He could be coming to New York to hunt Spider-Man, you know, um, like the classic story arcs have told us. All right, so that is definitely uh, the Spider-Man books that I'm speculating right now. And obviously, if we are getting Daredevil, Spider-Man number 50, first Kingpin, that would be so cool to see a live Daredevil and Kingpin. Daredevil's my favorite Marvel hero, Dark Change number two. So that would make me the happiest person ever. I would love to see that happen. Who knows? But obviously those are expensive books as as they are. So they're only going to increase in value. So definitely get those now before you see a trailer, before you get confirmation. Because right now everything is up in the air. Okay? 
Like I said, this video is all speculation. If it's true, guess what? This video is going to blow up. If this is not, if it's not come true, then I'm going to look like an idiot. But either way, it's fun. I'm having fun doing this. Um, DC Comics. Uh, number one spec book on my list is Imminent Crisis. Number two, first Jaime Reyes, who's already getting a TV show and animated uh, film, which is going to be the first Latino film in the DC universe. I already have the book. I bought it for five bucks. Um, but definitely pick up that book because it is trending right now. Get on that. And that is not something a lot of people have heard about because DC has been so quiet in their animated stuff and their, um, and they're like more niche areas of their universe because of the Snyder Cut, because of the, Bat uh, the Batman and all those, uh, and all that like HBO nonsense going on. That isn't necessarily that fun. But speaking of a DC live action show is uh, Superman and Lois, which to me, I'm getting a lot of Superman Convergence vibes. If you guys like matching the comic with the story arc of the film, definitely start looking at the Superman Convergence arcs. Uh, cause that to me is where the story is heading. Um, again, that's just how I felt after the first episode, but we will see how that continues. So, again, this is another Superman revamp, so take it for what it is. And we are getting a Superman movie, which, uh, J.J. Abrams and Ta-Nehisi Coates are gonna be a part of. So, once we get more information about that, there, I will be doing a spec list for that as well image comics is doing a lot of stuff the malar verse right jupiter's legacy um is coming out may 7th on netflix so make sure y'all picking up uh number one and then we also have department of truth number one by james tenney the fourth which that book has been going up in value ever since that there's like this huge um bidding war for the title of it for movies and we and we have a winner so definitely check that book out it's a great read anyway so it's a book that if you are into what James has been doing in his indie work, definitely pick this up. If you are just looking to spec on it, again, just pick it up and read the damn thing. It's a good book. But anyway, that is my list of what is going to be happening in the MCU. Make sure you guys comment below if if you uh, want to share your opinion. Let me know what you thought of this. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the Department of Comics. Give it a thumbs up. Turn on the bell so you guys know every time that we drop a video. Thank you guys so much for having me. This is Brandon. I'll see you guys next time.